Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of ARC TV. Today we're doing an impact installation in a 2015 and newer Roguelite. Okay, today we're gonna to be doing an impact install in a 2021 Roguelite. Basically what we're gonna be using is our Moto 720 amplifier, a PSM, our wiring kit, and our brand new Moto CX-6 speakers. All right, the first thing we're going to do is take the bags off. This is not a necessary step, but we're just doing it so we, we don't scratch them up. All right, we're going to undo the strap on one side so we can swing it over and then we can get our seat off. There's one more Phillips screw on the back of the seat. Remove that, lift up on the back of the seat, pull back, and remove the seat. Next, we're gonna pull the side covers on both sides. Once again, we're just doing this as a precaution so we don't scratch them. Next, we're gonna remove the fuel line. It's basic, you just push up on the silver connector and pull down on the black hose, just like that. Use a rag or a paper towel underneath the fuel line. You will have a few drops, but nothing major. To get the tank off of the bike, we have to undo one hose connection right here, one electrical connection right here, two half inch bolts back here and two half inch bolts up in front. The next thing we need to do is remove the plastic battery tray. In order to do that, we need to gain access to it. So we're gonna remove this connector, this connector, this connector here. Then we're gonna lift the ECU off and remove the quad lock. Then we'll be able to remove these two half inch bolts and get the battery cover off. The first thing we're gonna do is remove this connector, pry open this little black bar right here, pull forward. This connector will just slide off, just pull forward. This one you could just lift up and it's out of your way. Then we're gonna to go to the ECU. There's two little plastic tabs here, just pull them to the side. ECU will lift off, pull forward, pull up. And then you have a quad lock connector here. Little push button, push it, releases the quad lock, swing it all the way out and your ECU will pop off. To get the battery cover off, we just undo these two half inch bolts right here, lift them off. Then the back of the tray, you just lift it up, push forward, and you'll just lift it off of the battery. The next thing we're gonna do is we have to remove this little plastic shell over the wiring. There's three areas where the Harley has taped this off. We're gonna cut the tape off, and then it's just a matter of removing some clips. This is where we will lay our amplifier and PSM power wire harness. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna remove the fairing. In order to do that, the first thing you need to do is remove the two grills. We're gonna do everything on the left side and you're basically gonna mimic that on the right side. So the first step is you can use a pry tool, pry up on the center of the grill over here on the right side. You're just gonna lift that up. There's a little tab on the left and just pull it out and release. That releases your grill. You'll do the same on the other side. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come down here to these little winglets and there's two T25 screws. You need to remove both of those. There's also a screw that's inside underneath the grill on the left-hand side. That's a T27. You want to remove that one. And again, you'll do the same on the other side. All right, on each side, there's a marker light and there's a 3 16 inch Allen screw that you need to remove. And likewise, do that on the other side also. All right, the last four things that we need to remove to get the fairing off are these four Phillips screws here. Once we get those off, we'll be able to lift the fairing forward. All right, at this point, you can now take the windshield off of the bike. Next, you'll lift the upper cowl right off of the fairing. There's two clips in here that hold it on. You just want to give it a firm pull and it'll lift right off. On the top of the fairing, at both of these spots, there's two connectors for the marker lights. You need to undo those. You just push down on the top and pull apart. At this point, you can now pull your fairing forward.
Okay, the next thing we need to do is remove the headlight. And in order to do that, we need to remove this wire support bracket. We're just gonna use a pry tool and pry that off. With that bracket out of the way, what we need to do is remove these four screws right here. They're 3 16 inch Allen screws. We're gonna get those out and then we'll have the headlight out. The headlight just pulls forward and there's one connector right here. You just pull up on the tab and it'll slide right out and your headlight's out. All right, the next step is to lift the radio off. In order to do that, we have to get all the connectors off the radio. So we're gonna go ahead and pull these connectors off. The blue GPS connector, push on the bottom and pull. The AM FM antenna connector, push on the bottom and pull. And the USB connector, push on the top and pull. The main radio harness is a quad lock connector. You're gonna push on the side and swing it out. It'll swing all the way out and it'll release on its own. You just pull forward. And that's all the connectors for the radio. Now to get the radio off, there's four 3 16 inch Allen bolts. We're gonna go ahead and undo those bolts and we'll lift the radio straight up. Once you've got the bolts out, you can lift the radio straight up. All right, now that the radio is off, the next thing we're gonna do is install our integration harness. There's two sets of wires, a gray set and a white set. The gray is gonna go over here on the throttle side, the white's gonna come over here on the clutch side. So the way this works is, you'll find that your speaker pod here, there's a little connector, you're just gonna press down on it and disconnect. And you'll do the same on the other side over here. And then our harness, just acts as a T harness and it connects in between. You can't get it wrong. You just connect the males to the females. Now that the connectors are connected, the other end of the wire one will act as your input to the PSM, the other will be the output from your amplifier. What we're gonna do now is take the power wire out of our HDFH 2014 kit and the PSM power wire and run those back to the battery. In order to do that, we're gonna be bringing all the wires up to this little hole right here in, in the fairing. Next step is to run the power and ground wire for the amplifier and the PSM. We're gonna do the PSM wire first. And you'll notice that there's a little area right here where you can get the wire right through and it'll end up coming out in the front. Remember, before you make any connections at the battery, go ahead and pull the fuses out of both of the power wires and then you can attach those when everything is connected. On the battery side, you just need to leave about 10 to 12 inches of wire coming out past the shell. All right, what we're going to do now is make our power and ground connections to the battery post. You'll need a 10 millimeter socket to undo the battery post bolts. The next thing we're going to do now is we're going to take the top cover off the amplifier and do our amplifier settings. Okay, if you're using the PSM, there are a few basic settings you need to do on the amplifier. We'll start with the top row. We set the input select to four channel. We're gonna set the crossover to its lowest setting, so just turn it all the way counterclockwise. Your crossover switch, just set it to the right-hand position, which is full pass. The gain, what you'll do is you'll turn it counterclockwise all the way, and then clockwise until you get to the fourth dot. So you want it at about the one o'clock position. Then your output, you wanna set that to four channel stereo. And then we'll come back down here to our second row, which is our, our channel one and two settings. Same thing, we're gonna turn the crossover setting all the way down to minimum. We'll set the switch to full, We'll set the gain to one o'clock and we'll turn our auto sense off so the switch will be in the middle position. That's all the settings you need to do on the top of the amplifier. And then on the front of the amplifier, if you're using the PSM, you'll need to set the input to RCA. There's two switches and we'll set the impedance to four ohm. In our case, we're using only two, two sets of speakers for now. If you are not using a PSM, your amplifier settings are gonna be a little bit different. 
Keep in mind, without a PSM, your crossover and your gain adjustments are going to be made in real time. So you'll have to do this prior to mounting the amplifier on the mounting plate. So starting from our input switch, without a PSM, you're going to be setting the input to two channel. That'll route two channels of input on our wiring harness to all four channels of output on the amplifier. The crossover switch, depending on what type of speakers you're using, will vary somewhere between 80 to 110 hertz. Channels three and four usually go to six by nines. You can set that to about 80 hertz if you have six by nines. Crossover switch will be set to high. The gain adjustment will need to be made in real time. Output switch will be set to four channel stereo. Channels one and two generally go to the six and a halfs in the fairing. You'll set that to 110 hertz. Switch at high pass, and the gain again will be adjusted in real time. The auto sense switch will be set to off. If you're not using a PSM, your input switches will be set to speaker level input. So make sure both of these switches are set to the left hand position. Your impedance switches will match your speakers. In our case, we're using one speaker per channel, so we'll have a four ohm load on our, on our channel. So we're gonna set our switches to four ohm. All right guys, what we have done is already pre-prepped the PSM outside of the bike, just so you have an idea of what's going on. On the input side, we're using the speaker level input connector and we're gonna use the channel one, two input. Channels three, four, and five, six have been taped off. On the output side, we're gonna use our RCA connector. We're using the channel one, two, and three, four outputs. Channel five, six have been taped off. The switch in the center, for auto sense, we've set that to off. And the only connector that needs to still plug in here is our power connector, which is on the bike. We're gonna bring that and plug that in when we take this over. Give you an idea how the barrel connectors work. These ship with the PSM, you get a, you get four of them in there. Real basic, you just connect these up right here. And then what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna tape over these just so the bare connectors aren't exposed. This is our PSM power connector that we ran up from the battery earlier. This is pre-prepped so you have an idea of how it works. The orange and gray wires have been taped off. We will not be using those. This red wire is actually gonna exit right here through the front and it's gonna to connect to our PNA wire that comes over from our PNA port. We supply the blue butt connector that you'll need to make that connection. These three wires right here are gonna exit under the fairing right here. The blue wire will go to the amplifier to act as a turn on. The yellow and black are just simply the power wires for the PSM coming up from the battery. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and feed this signal harness up to the area where the PSM is gonna mount right here under the tray. You'll notice there's a little triangular hole underneath this area where the radio used to be. You just feed it through that. You'll bring it around and you'll have your connector right there. On top of the plate right here is an available PNA wire. It has a dummy plug that's in it. You can just press down on top and pull that dummy plug right out. And then we supply a PNA wire that will plug right into that. The other end of the PNA wire, like we said, is gonna come over and you'll just make a butt connector connection to the PSM wire. All right, with your butt connection done, you can secure your PNA wire along this harness that runs along the top of the bike. We supply the zip ties that you'll use. All right, guys, this right here is the USB cable that ships with the PSM. We're gonna be doing further tuning on this bike after it's buttoned up. So we're gonna actually route this cable from the PSM and down right where we brought the power wire up and tuck it underneath the tank. All right, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna install our pre prep PSM over here on the clutch side. It goes right here underneath the mounting plate. And what we have already done is we've attached like a two by three size of piece of Velcro on the bottom side of the PSM. And then we attach the opposite side of that Velcro underneath this metal plate right here. Easy way to mount this is to put a piece of cardboard or paper between the two Velcros, align the PSM once you get it in there, and then just pull the cardboard out and it'll stick right to the Velcro. All right, before we mount the PSM, we're gonna make the power and ground connection. This is the harness that we routed through that little triangular hole. And we're gonna connect the USB, which was routed through that same hole. Once that's done, you can go ahead and put the rubber cover over everything. Okay, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna route our RCAs through that same little triangular hole where we routed up our power cables. 
And what we did is we went ahead and marked with a little piece of black electrical tape, which one is for channel one and two. So when you go to connect it to the amplifier, you won't get confused. Okay, at this point, these are the wires that you should have under your fairing here. You can have a power and ground wire. We went ahead and stripped these back about five eighths of an inch. We have our remote turn on wire that's coming from the PSM and we have our two RCA connectors that are coming from the PSM. To make the power and ground connections on the amplifier, you'll need a 1 8 inch Allen key. And to make the remote turn on and the speaker connections on the amplifier, you'll use a precision screwdriver with a flat blade. Okay, here you can see we have all our connections made. We've got power and ground right here, channel one and two coming into the amplifier from the output of the PSM. Our remote turn on wire is connected and our speakers are connected. This connector here is the remaining connector on the, on the integration harness. And this is going to connect to the input harness on the PSM, which we have sitting right here. All right, what we're gonna do now is slide our amplifier into place for final mounting. Once it clicks into place right here, all that's left to do is attach your last two screws on top and then go ahead and finish tightening the bottom screws. Okay, with the amplifier in place, last connection is to connect the integration harness to the PSM's input. Good thing about a road glide, that any of the 2015 up road glides, is changing the speakers in these is way easier than changing the speakers on a, on a street glide. Um, all you do is undo the four bolts, we're gonna pop the speaker out and we're gonna pop the new speakers in. All right guys, before you go to pop your speaker in, the road glides on the pods have an alignment tab right here on the bottom, there's one on each side. You wanna make sure you clip that off with a flush cut tool. And once that's off, your speaker will sit nice and flat. All right, guys, for those of you who don't know, Harley reverses the polarity on their connectors. Their large connector is negative, their small connector is positive, which is the opposite of most aftermarket speakers, which use large positive, small negative. So to correct that, what we have done is in our harness, our HDFH 2014 harness, we correct the polarity for you. So you can connect the connectors just as they are to your speakers, and your polarity will still be correct because it's corrected in the harness. Your Moto CX-6 will ship with a baggie of screws. You will use those screws to attach the speakers to the pods. All right, the best thing to do is to start the screws by hand, and then you can finish them off with a screwdriver or a drill driver. All right, now that the speakers are installed, we can move on to the next step. All right, what we did here was take the integration harness and zip tie it along the main loom harness so all the wiring is nice and cleaned up. What we're gonna do next, now that this is wrapped up, is we're gonna put everything back together. We're gonna go ahead and drop the radio back in. Next, we're gonna reconnect the headlight. All right, now we're gonna reattach the fairing. All right, we're gonna go ahead and snap the cowl back on. All right, let's go ahead and put the windshield back on. All right, guys, before you put your battery compartment back together, please remember to put your fuses back into the power wire for the amplifier and the power wire for the PSM. All right, guys, we're gonna go ahead and reassemble the battery tray. All right, we're gonna go ahead and pop the backbone back on. All right, we're gonna go ahead and pop our tank back on. All right, we're gonna pop our side covers back on. Install the seat and the bags.
And last, we'll pop the grills back on. All right, guys, that wraps up the install on this bike. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time on ARC TV.